Often trash can be seen as an out of sight, out of mind process where we may think very little of it once it's picked up from the curb. Unfortunately, the trash does not just disappear and must be managed safely to minimize environmental harm. Here to share about the waste process and what you need to know about your trash is Assistant Manager for the Solid Waste Division of Orange County Utilities, Kevin Simmons. Thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Tell us about yourself and the Orange County Solid Waste. Awesome. Well, my name is Kevin Simmons. I am the assistant manager for the Solid Waste Division. Uh, I've been with Orange County Utilities for 15 years, and two of those years is with the Solid Waste Division. And our Solid Waste Division is made up of 162 uh, dedicated employees, and we provide solid waste recovery services for Orange County's residents, businesses, as well as guests. And what is Orange County Solid Waste comprised of? Well, it's a big operation. Uh, many would be surprised to know that uh, we're responsible for uh, managing and operating the uh, Orange County landfill, uh, which receives about a million tons of, of garbage uh, annually. Uh, also responsible for uh, two transfer stations, as well as the residential curbside collection program responsible for providing uh, recycling and garbage carts and making sure that there is timely once a week uh, pickup of garbage, recyclables, uh, yard waste, as well as large item pickup. And what's the transfer station? Transfer stations are located on the uh, west, uh, western side of the county. Uh, it allows uh, the community as well as our haulers to be able to efficiently bring uh, their garbage and uh, recyclables to that location rather than having to transfer all the way back to the uh, landfill. And what are ways that Orange County's solid waste team works with the residents of Orange County in relation to waste management? Uh, it's a great question. Um, we try to be uh, uh, very responsive. We also try to communicate as often as possible. I think one of the uh, main ways that we're proud of is our recycling quality improvement program. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to be able to provide feedback to our customers about what uh, should be going into the recycling cart. And so uh, that's a, a great way of communicating and engaging with our, our residents about how to properly recycle materials. And that consists of the labels that... That's correct. Actually, we have, um, so we have uh, folks that will go and uh, inspect the uh, uh, garbage carts and look inside and then provide feedback. And so we have a great job tag. And then we also have a oops tag. And both of those tags basically just kind of reinforce the message and kind of educate folks in terms of what should be going into the recycling carts versus what should go into the garbage carts. And they're two-sided carts, so they also are in English and in Spanish as well. Also, you do some, some events where people could bring some recycling items like computers and... We do have a uh, household hazardous waste facility. We have a facility at the uh, landfill. And we also have a uh, hazardous house, household waste facility at our Porter Transfer Station uh, on the uh, west side of town as well. Uh, historically, we've done events at, at schools and throughout the community. Uh, but with the pandemic, we've kind of uh, slowed that down a little bit. But we hope to be able to revisit that in the future. What other types of events or services does Solid Waste provide? Um, what we do, we've historically done a lot of engagement with schools uh, to ed educate our children, again, about you know proper recycling and about what we do. Um, we have a great video uh, on our website. Our website is a great tool for education and for outreach. Um, it allows the uh, community to be able to see, um, you know, how to properly dispose of their trash and recyclables. Um, it also gives them a, a great video tour of our landfill operations. And so I think that's a, a great opportunity for us to engage with our residents. What should people know about what they should be putting in their recycle and what they should be putting in their trash bin? And just go over the colors too, just. Yep, absolutely, fantastic. Um, I think what we found is that most people want to do the right thing. It's just there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And so our goal really is to educate and provide proper information. And so uh, with our recycle carts, the uh, blue top carts is for recyclables and the green top is for garbage. And so um, we just have a Think Five program. Just to make it very simple, we think about five items. And so for that blue top recycling cart, the items that you put in those carts would involve uh, glass, whether they be jars or containers or bottles, jars and bottles, uh, plastic uh, bottles, containers and jars, uh, clean paper, uh, clean cardboard and metal cans. And so if you think five, that will help you kind of simplify what should go into the recyclable. And we also say when in doubt, just throw it out. 
And when you say clean paper and cardboard, meaning no food on it. Correct. So for example, pizza boxes, even though they're made out of cardboard because of the grease and everything, it makes it difficult for us to process. And so that would be an item that you'd want to actually put into your garbage cart, the green top garbage cart rather than the blue top recycle. And what about paper plates? Paper plates, it's a great question. You'd want to put those actually in the um, uh, garbage uh, container. Because that's food on it. That's correct. That's and correct. same thing with paper cups. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And if you're able to, if it's a recyclable item and you're able to wash them, and that would be ideal as well, because uh, the more that we can redirect, the more landfill, the better. But if it is uh, not clean, then we prefer that you put it into the garbage cart. I really love that Orange County sends out those postcards that kind of tells you, too, that the five items correct. and some more information about it. Correct. Um, That's another engagement strategy is that periodically if we have a change around the holidays in terms of the pickup schedule, we'll include that messaging on there. And then we also have a communication piece called the Recycler that we do quarterly that provides information about uh, just educational information about what should be recycled and what should not be recycled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to have actually the postcard up on the wall, like above my trash can so that the kids know. Yes. And then you sent out a magnet one. Yes. And so since my can is metal, I put it, the magnet one on the can. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we're glad you're using those tools because I think those are great educational things for the family because sometimes I know in my household it's, it's making sure that everybody's on the same page because we all want to do the right thing. So one of the things about plastic is you have those the triangles with the numbers in the middle. What does that mean? Correct. It depends on the different types of uh, materials that is in that, that, that plastic. And so for our residents, I think the main thing to remember uh, with plastics in particular, uh, one through five. And so one through five, if you see the, the number one, two, three, or four or five, uh, those are the type of plastics that can be recycled through our program. Let's say someone has something they want to bring to one of the transfer stations or to the landfill. What's the process? Well, I guess the landfill and the transfer station are different. probably have different processes, right? Correct. Correct. So can you walk us through what that process is so that if someone goes they understand what they need to do? Absolutely, I think one of the major tools that I would recommend for our residents to use is on our website, it's called What Goes Where. And it's uh, ocfl.net uh, forward slash what goes where. And it's a search tool and you just put whatever item it's in there and it tells you what's the proper way and the best way to dispose of that item. And so uh, most things, if you're uh, able to uh, dispose of it at the, tr at the landfill, then we'd recommend that you do that. Um, but then there are certain items that you can dispose of at transfer station and that what goes where tool will help you do that. As well as just the general page about our landfill and our, and our, uh, our transfer stations uh, gives you a, a insight in terms of what you can bring there. Uh, and there are some items, large item pickups can be just picked up from the curb. And so that's a thing too, that you don't have to uh, travel. Uh, depending on the item, you may not have to travel. You can just put it out on the curb and we'll pick it up. So if someone goes to a landfill and they drive up, because I know it could be confusing because I've gone and that's, I was confused. That's correct. So what do they need to know? I know you have a video too, but yes, why well, I think it's just quickly talk us through it. Absolutely. Well, when you go in there, there's going to be some signage that will direct you to where you need to go. In most cases, when residents are coming, they might come to our small uh, uh, vehicle drop-off area. And so it's very conveniently located when you get to the scale house. Um, they'll direct you. So that's the, the best thing is that if you have any questions while you're on the landfill property, we have staff that is willing to direct you and provide direction. Uh, you can also call in advance. Um, you can call our solid waste hotline, 407-836-6601, and um, they'll answer any questions that you have there as well. And again, the, the website is a, a phenomenal tool that lays out uh, where and how to dispose of your, your, uh, your waste. Okay. And I really like that tool that you have the search tool and you can put in like whatever it is. So let's say you want to put in batteries. Yes. It tells you, how you exactly properly. how to properly do it. It's amazing. Okay. Yes. And the curbside pickup for large items, what type of large items do you take? Uh, typically we see like um, uh, tires. Sometimes we see um, furniture. And so typically, uh, and again, the, the parameters are listed on the website, but generally speaking, if you think about anything that can fit in the back of a, a pickup truck, a regular size pickup mm -hmm. truck, would be something that we could accommodate through the large item pickup. Okay, so is there something too small for the large item pickup? <laughs> um, well, I would say if it can go in your recycling cart now, or your garbage cart and, and it's garbage, then it can go inside there. Um, if it's too large for the, the cart, that's a rule of thumb that that's usually okay. something to be considered a large item. Okay, great, good to know. All right, and I know I get a lot of questions to my office about, well, they didn't pick up my yard waste. They're expecting me to do this, this, and that to it in order to pick it up. So what is the process for when you're putting yard waste 
Alfred Pickup, what are you supposed to do? Another great question. Uh, we just ask that it's 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 cut and it's bundled and and, and make sure that it makes it easier because with yard waste it's it's uh, it's hard to manage if it's not bundled. And so again, the the details and the specifics are that because there are unique situations. Go to the website or you can call because sometimes even on the website it may not be clear. Mm -hmm. You can call based on your specific situation and our customer service representatives will let you know. But just basically um, uh, bundled um, or bagged uh, would be uh, allowable for yard waste. And why is that important? Uh, just to make it easier for collection. Because like I said, with um, large items, you can pick them up and you can transport them. But with uh, yard waste, uh, you're talking about grass or palm fronds and things of that nature. It makes it hard to, to, to collect. So if you can bundle it, uh, containerize it, then that makes it a lot easier for us to collect. And another question I've been getting for residents that is on, um, on compost. So the county used to have compost and also um, wood chips as well. Do we, I know we had that before. It was pandemic. It's in staffing. It's been difficult. We we did have it. We suspended it because of uh, staffing concerns, and so and that's a you know great uh, segue. We you know our solid waste team is a, a great place to work, and so we actually have some great opportunities for uh, folks that want to come and, and work. And because we've been dealing with some challenging situation with staffing, and so that's one of the reasons why we were unable to provide the compost. But um, we encourage those who might look for an opportunity to work. Uh, to check us out at uh, Orange County Utilities. Is there anything else you would like to leave our viewers with? Yes, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I think this was a great opportunity for us to continue to uh, communicate and engage with our residents. Uh, we just wanted just to uh, continue to let residents know that they can uh, contact us via our solid waste hotline and the uh, Orange County uh, website, again, that what goes where tool, uh, ocfl.net forward slash what goes where. Um, that will answer 99.9% uh, .9 of the questions that you may have about uh, what goes where and how to properly dispose of your materials. Um, and just to make sure that we um, are on the same page with recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, recycling is a big uh, a goal of ours to make sure that we properly dispose of recyclables. I think one of the things that um, uh, residents uh, should know is that we've heard over the last several years that the recycling market has been down uh, because there are markets around the world that have not been taking them, but actually it's been rebounding. And actually, there are new markets in the United States that have emerged, and there's a big demand now for recyclables, particularly paper. And so we want to uh, increase the um, longevity of our landfill. Uh, we want to be responsible stewards of the community that we live and work in. And so it's important to us that we collaborate with our community, with our residents, to be able to make sure that they understand how to properly uh, recycle and help them to dispose of their waste. Thank you so much again for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed this time. Thanks.